this story of adventure, determination, and the convergence of diverse cultures comes alive daily at Jamestown Settlement Museum, located in the Williamsburg area of Virginia. Exhibit galleries tell about the Europeans, Powhatan Indians, and Africans who populated 17th century Virginia. Hundreds of artifacts from the period, among them portraits, documents, furnishings, ceremonial and decorative objects, tools and weapons are displayed. Three-dimensional, life-size structures and small theatres help bring the story to life. Outdoors, explore recreations of a colonial fort and Powhatan Indian village, where historical interpreters describe and demonstrate daily life in the early 17th century. You can try on armour in the fort and grind corn in the Powhatan village. Tour a riverfront discovery area to learn about boat building, production of commodities and trade, reflecting diverse cultural traditions. Aboard full-scale recreations of the English ships that brought the settlers to the New World, find out how the English crossed the ocean on three small ships. Try steering with a whip staff or settle into a sailor's bunk. After learning about the nation's beginnings at Jamestown Settlement, travel 20 miles and 174 years to Yorktown. The Yorktown Victory Center chronicles the American Revolution, from the beginnings of colonial unrest to the formation of a new nation. Gallery exhibits feature eyewitness accounts of people who experienced the revolution, explore the three-week siege that ensured American independence, and detail the final steps in America's journey to nationhood. A living history Continental Army encampment and 1780s farm provide a glimpse of military and domestic life during the revolutionary era. Hands-on activities are encouraged. Yorktown, Jamestown and Williamsburg are all linked by the scenic Colonial Parkway. In addition to Jamestown Settlement and the Yorktown Victory Center, you may also wish to visit the National Park Service sites, historic Jamestown and Yorktown Battlefield, as well as Colonial Williamsburg, Bush Gardens Williamsburg and Water Country USA. To plan your adventure, visit www.historyisfun.org. Jamestown, December the 25th, 1607, a bleak and bitter time. For the few remaining English colonists, food running low, there was little to celebrate except survival, and some must have regretted even that. Their ships had returned home, leaving the small group, fewer than 50, alone in the sparse settlement. The strongest among them, Captain John Smith, had set out from the colony on December the 10th and had not returned. Some of the colonists were sick. All of them were cold, hungry, and fearful of Indian attack. How they must have longed for England, especially at Christmas, when even the poorest among them would have enjoyed some kind of holiday cheer. For these wretched souls at Jamestown, there was no celebration. English women were not yet in Virginia to help keep old traditions alive. Perhaps the men offered up a special prayer on that day. Two traditions, early Christian and Druid pagan, had evolved to become the splendid 17th century Christmas of Elizabethan England. And this is what the colonists at Jamestown were missing. They had been accustomed to a lengthy celebration from Christmas Day through Twelfth Night, January the 5th. English men and women from the highest to the lowest classes ate, drank and made merry in excess, sometimes for days. Activities which were usually considered unacceptable were encouraged during the holidays. Gaming was widespread. Records show that many at the royal court gambled with large sums of money, although such behavior was illegal at other times of the year. On a more modest scale, carolers sang for their neighbors much as they do today. Villagers, known as mummers, went from house to house wearing amusing costumes and blackened or masked faces to keep their identities secret so that the play would bring good luck. 
They performed simple skits, songs and dances to entertain their neighbors and hope for gifts of money or food in return. Members at court chose a Lord of Misrule to lead them in often noisy and disorderly fun during the holiday. Using a pool of money at his disposal, the Lord was responsible for providing special entertainment for those under his domain. Christmas may have been the only time for some people to take advantage of the relaxed atmosphere and indulge in games such as hide and seek, blind man's buff, or hunt the slipper. The Lord of Misrule could arrange for music, theatrical events, processions, or a Christmas mask. The mask was an elaborately staged play, often commemorating a recent event. Shakespeare's Twelfth Night may have been first performed before Elizabeth I on January the 5th, 1601, and its topsy-turvy plot reflects the spirit of the Lord of Misrule. The boar's head platter was featured in the most well-known of all Elizabethan Christmas customs, the feast. For those at court, food and drink were extravagant in both appearance and amount. Parties and balls required lavish gowns and finery, which wealthier couples showed off each night of the season. A yule log, the biggest that could be found, would be hauled home on Christmas Eve and lit with a remnant of last year's log. It burned right through Christmas. The ancient Druid custom of using greens as decoration was continued by Elizabethans, who embellished walls and doors with holly, ivy, and other evergreens. Although it was used in some homes, mistletoe was not approved of by the church because of its connection with rites of human sacrifice. In addition to special church services to celebrate the birth of Christ, other 20th century holiday customs, both sacred and secular, were part of the 17th century Christmas. From the Middle Ages, alms boxes had been placed in churches to collect money for the poor and opened on December the 26th by the priests. By 1607, charity at Christmas time was widespread. But at Jamestown, there were no gifts to exchange at Christmas time. Back in England, the exchange of gifts had begun, but on a much smaller scale than today, primarily between servant and master. Employers might put contributions in special containers to be opened by their servants and apprentices again on the day after Christmas, which became known as Boxing Day. Noblemen, who spend much of their time at court, return to the countryside at Christmas to make sure their land and its inhabitants were properly looked after, often providing gifts and feasts to servants. The voyage to Virginia began only a few days before Christmas in 1606. Perhaps the gentlemen aboard the three small ships transported more extravagant Christmas memories than did their poorer companions. But gentlemen and laborers alike had experienced some kind of holiday celebration in England, and they brought with them the memories of customs and traditions of the Elizabethan period, a holy day and a festival observed with merriment and feasting. By December 1608, some of the colonists were lucky enough to spend Christmas in dry, warm Indian dwellings at Kikutan, feasting on oysters, fish, meat and bread. A definite improvement. But many years passed before the holiday resembled, even faintly, the Elizabethan tradition they left behind. At this time of year, we might remember those first brave adventurers who struggled through years of harsh winters, starvation and pitiful circumstances to survive and to celebrate at last Christmas in the new world. Thanks for watching. 
If you'd like to help us produce more compelling historical content like this, please like, comment below, and share this video with fellow history buffs. And of course, be sure to subscribe to help keep history happening.